In 2018, Louise Porton went against every mother's instinct when she brutally attacked and killed her two children. Today, we're going to look into everything that drove a woman to murder her children, including a look at Louise's early years. At the time of the murders in 2018, Porton was still a young woman herself at 22 years old. She had two children, three-year-old Lexi and 17-month-old Scarlett, and they lived together in Beechwood Court Rugby, Warwickshire in England. The children's father was not in the picture and had in fact never met Scarlett. The family had previously resided at a location in Willenhall from August 2016 to November 2017. The landlady at this address wound up watching Porton's children most of the time whilst Porton went out socialising. According to the landlady, Porton would do whatever she could to not have her children with her. Porton spent a lot of time on dating apps where she claimed to be a model and advertised her sexual services to men in exchange for cash. Porton confessed that she did not find parenting easy, admitting in text to her sister that she had given her children sleeping drugs or had left them alone while she went out to have sex. In January 2018, Porton's daughter Lexi was admitted to hospital several times for illnesses which could not be explained. Twice, Lexi was admitted with breathing difficulties, just days apart, and was only saved through the efforts of paramedics. Lexi's symptoms were consistent with deliberate airway obstruction, but at the time, suspicions were not raised, and her breathing difficulties were attributed to a chest infection. Whilst Lexi suffered in hospital, Porton showed little concern. She sent nude photographs to a photographer from the hospital toilets and offered sex acts for money. Just a few days after Lexi was released from hospital, Porton called 999 reporting her daughter was ill again. The operator asked if Lexi was breathing, to which Porton just replied, no. Unfortunately, when medical assistance arrived, it was too late. Lexi had in fact been dead long before Porton made the phone call. Following Lexi's passing, Porton exhibited strange behaviour that was hardly consistent with a grieving mother. The day after Lexi's death, Porton accepted 41 friend requests on a dating app called Meet Me, continued to message men on an app called Badoo, and spent the day arranging to meet men. During a conversation about tattoos, Porter very casually dropped into the conversation that her daughter had passed away the previous day. Porter's strange antics didn't stop there. At Lexi's funeral a couple of weeks later, Porton was heard laughing in the funeral parlour and could be seen talking to a man on FaceTime. When a friend asked Porton about Lexi's death, Porton replied, I had two, now down to one. Not quite the expected response from a mother who should have been grieving. What would be any parent's worst nightmare was only made worse when Porton's youngest daughter, Scarlett, suddenly died. Porton and Scarlett had been staying in a hotel when Scarlett was coldly murdered. Again, Porton did not seem at all phased, as she carried Scarlett's body to her car and then rang the NHS non-emergency line, telling the operator her daughter was unwell, but it did not seem urgent. Porton claimed Scarlett had stopped breathing whilst in her car seat. When paramedics arrived just nine minutes later, Scarlett was found dead, and it was revealed she had been dead for some time, just like what had happened with Lexi. Again, Scarlett's death was consistent with intentional obstruction of her airways, and a post-mortem showed her neck had been compressed. Doctors were unable to find any natural reason as to why either child let alone both, had died. It did not take long for suspicion to fall on Porton, and police turned their investigation towards her. Police discovered that Porton had conducted numerous incriminating online searches throughout January, which suggested she had killed her children and tried to cover it up. Her searches included how long it took for bodies to go cold up to the shoulder, can you die if you have a blocked nose and cover your mouth with tape, and how long after drowning can someone be resuscitated? It was clear that Porton had tried to kill her children before and had only just been successful in January. From a statement made by the children's father, 
it appears he had concerns over Porton and contacted social services about her, although we're not sure what was said or reported. The girl's father had said, maybe if social services had listened to me, my girls would still be alive today. In the days following her arrest, Porton posted a picture online with the caption of fuck the haters and smile as well as advertising Lexi and Scarlett's clothes for sale on Facebook for £20, later dropping the price down to £15. Porton went on trial for both murders in 2019 and was found guilty by unanimous jury decision after a five-week trial. Porton was described as evil and calculated by the judge, who was sure Porton was responsible for Lexi's prior hospital admissions. It was also noted that Porton only called emergency services once she was certain her daughters were dead. Porton was given a minimum sentence of 32 years imprisonment and still showed no remorse. Porton denied any wrongdoing throughout and told police that she never considered her children to be an inconvenience and that she still does not know how her daughters died. It was ascertained that the reason behind the murders was that the children got in the way of Porton's sex life. Can you believe a woman would kill her children for this reason alone? According to psychologists, filicide, where a parent kills their own child, occurs more often than not whilst the parent is in a state of psychosis, which results in hallucinations, delusions and confused thoughts. However, Porton was found to have no medical history or mental disorder. However, she did exhibit borderline personality disorder symptoms as well as narcissistic characteristics like a lack of empathy and a sense of self-importance. Porton has been likened to Rosemary West in the way that she appears to have lacked the ability to be a loving mother. Although Porton could care for her kids and they did not exhibit any signs of neglect, she obviously did not love or care about them. Let me know in the comments below what you think. In my opinion, no one of sound and rational mind would commit such horrific acts. Let's take a look into Porton's childhood and see if we can dig into her psyche. According to Porton's cousin, they grew up in a tight-knit family. However, Porton was always an outsider, never wanting to get involved. Every Sunday, the children would visit their grandmother, but Porton would just stand aside, giving nasty looks. Whenever anyone went near her, she'd threaten them with violence and walk out. From a young age, Porton demonstrated violent and manipulative behavior. As children, the cousins would get into fights, but Porton would slyly dig her nails when no one was looking. At around 11 years old, Porton started to steal from her grandmother, but when confronted, Porton would threaten to never come round again. It was around this time that Porton's mother, Sharon, walked out on her to be with another man, leaving Porton's dad to raise her and her two siblings alone. Porton was deeply affected by this and cut her mother off for years. Porton's behavior worsened with age. She was always looking for money and had started to show signs of sex addiction, which worried her family. This very addiction was what motivated the murders of her children years later. According to family members, Porton was having sexual relations with anyone and everyone, especially if they had money. Porton's relationship with her family worsened when her grandmother became ill. With just hours left to live, Porton refused to visit her and also did not turn up to the funeral. This was the final straw and Porton was cut off by her family due to her selfish actions. Porton's behavior continued to worsen as she bragged on Facebook about how much money she could make by selling sex. I think the reason this case is so horrifying is because it goes against nature. Mothers are the ones to give life, so when they take it, it's truly shocking. What do you think about Porton's mindset? Had she sought help for her sex addiction, would the outcome be different? Are some people just not made for parenthood? Let me know in the comments below.